So there's those two pieces of photo etch glued on there. Uh, don't worry about gluing, I'll show you gluing um, later. What we want to do now is spray this, but before we spray it, we need to do a little bit of prep work. Um, so it's a case of, um, I've got some cocktail sticks here, bit of blue tack on the end, um, and really, you know, we can go off and we sort of get this sort of stuck down on the back of our instrument display panel here, right? Because we're not going to see the back of the instrument display panel. So we don't have to worry about um, not spraying the back. As you can see there, I've done the same with the chair. A um, bit of polystyrene um, doesn't go amiss just to sort of um, place them in there rather nicely. Um, you can also go off and get these locking tweezers. These are rather good for um, sort of just, you know, catching little bits. I mean, these bits are going to be glued here, so we can just sort of hold them in like so, nice and easy, just like that. Um, now, when it comes to spraying, um, if you've never sprayed before, um, there's loads and loads of videos on the Genesis Models website, loads of step-by-steps -step going into it, um, but basically, um, really, it's it's sort of a lot about the mixture and sort of getting that flow. Um, now, I'm using a Evolution 2-in-1 CR+, Plus, very expensive airbrush, uh, but you can go out there and get all sorts of cheap airbrushes. I've got a... Um, What's this one? This is a Vida. Um, it's only about £20. It is rather cheap. It's not as good quality by all means, but it's really good to get you started um, with airbrushing. Um, so when I talk about mixture, mixture is going to be probably the, the, the one of the major problems that you're going to have when you first start out. Um, now, the paint I'm going to be using is we want to do this like an interior World War II interior green. A good one for that is um, Hanance's XA1117 interior green. Um, I always use this for all my World War II stuff. Give it a good shake. Right. I've noticed with um, extra acrylic paints they can get a little bit bitty so after giving it a shake just leave it to sit for a couple of minutes to let those little bits sort of go to the bottom so we don't get them in our airbrush. Um, when it comes to thinners um, all the manufacturers out there of paints do their own thinners however um, you know I came up with a good formula of my own which is the Genesis Models homebrew thinners. Go to the Genesis Models website in the tutorial section you'll find a video called homebrew thinners and it tells you how to make your own thinners and in all honesty ever since I've did that years ago and lots of people have also said you know it is one of the best thinners out there um, maybe it's because it's sort of like the simple ingredients that are used in this um, but it really does work very well with so many manufacturers of paint out there especially extra acrylics in 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 a lot of cases uh, the homebrew thinners works better than uh, extra acrylics own home um, thinners that they do for themselves so definitely a good one to video to check out there now you always want to start off with pouring um, your thinners into your color cup first we do this so as um, because what you've got to remember is there is a reservoir down in the needle end just here a little tiny reservoir where we can't get in and mix the paint um, and the first thing you want coming out your airbrush if you're going to have anything in that reservoir is going to be thinners if it's if you put paint in first you're going to have thick um, non sort of thin down paint coming out your needle end first and potentially block up your uh, your needle um, so we're going to pour in our paint here now um, Normally, with a lot of paints, it's all 50-50 mix um, a lot of the time. Um, now, this doesn't have to be an exact science. You don't have to, although when you start off, you could go off and get pipettes and measure two mils of thinners and two mils of paint. You could do that, um, but really, after time, you will sort of get the feel for doing a 50-50 mix of just eyeballing it in your color cup, right? Um, now it doesn't matter if it's acts, you know, 100% accurate. I mean, it all comes down to 
uh, how it sprays out of your airbrush. So first off, you know, let's mix that. You know, we've sort of eyeballed it. It looks about a 50-50 mix, right? But we're not too worried if it's maybe 60% paint to thinners or something. You know, we're just going for that 50-50, right? And then let's put a piece of kitchen paper towel down. Now, when using acrylics, 50-50 mix, Normally, it's going to be around about sort of just under 20 psi on your regulator. Um, now, this is where, as I say, you don't have to worry too much about the mixture because really it's how it comes out of your airbrush, right? So, I mean, we spray this out and we just see how it feels and sprays coming out of the airbrush, right? And what you're after is just a nice feathered you know you want that spray pattern to be just nicely feathered you don't want it to be spluttering if it's spluttering the pet the mixture is too thick so add some thinners if it's spidering okay spidering is where um if we sort of show you one here spidering is where it does that it sort of comes off and does like a bit of a spider kind of thing going on there um, now if it does that really really quickly and it looks really thin um, basically you've added too much thinner so you might want to add a little bit more paint um, but really it is just get the feel for it and if it feels good on a kitchen paper towel come to the model at this end of the back here we're not going to be seeing that so you could just do a bit of a test and just see how's that spraying on and that's spraying on as you can see it's nicely feathered you're not seeing big spots or anything of it blobbing on or, or watering or, or spidering or anything like that. it's just going on really nice and feathered and that's what it's all about is just getting it to spray out um, the way you want it right so the next thing is is spraying it on now uh, when it comes to spraying um, you know, you want a dual action, right? I mean, a single action, there are applications where they are kind of better, but really, you know, 99 times out of 10, no, 9 times out of 10, um, really, you want a dual action. You want to be pressing down for air, where you get just air, and then, you know, you push back and you get paint, just like so. Um, so what you want to do, you want to start off where um, you get that, biting point now the biting point is uh, a term that i use which is really important for getting control of your airbrush so the biting point is where we actually press down for air we slowly bring back the trigger until boom we get that little bit of paint just coming out that's the biting point that is that point in which that paint starts to come out right it's just like a clutch you pull back and you know just at one point it the engine starts to you know kick in the gearbox and starts to sort of move that's what you want you want that point where it just there we go we get paint that biting point and that's what we want to do with our first coat of paint we don't want to be put in you know we don't want to come along and just go blast let's just get a big thick wadge of paint on there because that's going down really really wet it could start running and pooling and doing all horrible things what you want to do is you want to just pull pull down the trigger for air slowly pull back getting that biting point get in control of it and you just want to get a really nice light misty coat as you can see that isn't giving us a lot of coverage it's just giving us that um, nice light misty coat and what this is all about is what we're, what we're doing here we're spraying on on bare plastic so by putting that misty coat down first it sort of allows the paint to stick to the model um, a lot easier than just slapping down a big quick thick coat um, you know it means that all the coats that we're going to put on now have got something to bite to you know it's going to have it's going to be able to bite to itself in a, in a sense we've got this paint that's already down here it's nice and light and feathered you press down the trigger just the trigger so you just get air and that'll dry off really really quickly so when we put on our next coat which we're going to do a light coat right that light coat now is going to have 
that first light misty, misty coat to stick to a lot easier and it's just going to go down nicer um, it's going to go down more um, smoothly it's not going to um, go down sort of it's not going to have that rough texture to it it's going to have a nice smooth texture to it and we're going to have a, a good good um, paint finish on there now you just want to go around and spray pretty much with this particular kit everything's basically interior green so we're all good there so that's all nicely sprayed now when it comes to spraying uh, acrylics dry really really quickly um, that come touch dry within just a couple of minutes um, I mean paint does tech um, you know acrylics will still tech a good you know 24 hours to properly cure you know when I mean cure I mean the paint is dry right down to the bone as much as this I mean I can touch this now it feels touch dry um, you know it's it's still sort of wet underneath the surface so good 24 hours for it to properly cure although you can still mess about with it after like um, you know a couple of minutes really which is what um, acrylics is so good with um, now I know acrylics is not as harmful as your health as you know enamels or lacquers or some and stuff like that but still you want your extract fans on face masks on and all that good stuff now a question that was asked on the forum is if you've got any paint left over which i have as you can see in my color cup what do you do with it um well it all sort of depends the safest bet is if i used um hanance's um own thinners right i would just pour it straight back in or if i use tamiya thinners with tamiya paints i'd pour it back in but because i've used uh, my own sort of personal homebrew thinners or if i use a different manufacturer of thinners um it's a safer bet just to pour it away in the bin um, because although it seems to be mixing quite nicely in the color cup um, if you leave it um, in your your nice fresh pot of paint a different manufacturer of thinners um, you know for however many months until you use it again it could send it nasty it has done that to me in the past so it's it's safer just to just pour in the same manufacturer of thinners if you've used it or if you haven't used the same manufacturer of thinners just pour it in the bin uh, which i've just got underneath here then what i'm going to do is is cleaning your airbrush it is important to clean your clean your airbrush all right that's just down the side let's just wipe that up um, now to start off with I come in with the homebrew thinners because it's really cheap you can you know make loads and loads of this for hardly next to nothing all right and what I like to do is with kitchen paper towel just pinch the end of um, the needle end push down for air and then slowly pull back until what you get is basically a load of bubbles um, which is the air trying to escape out of the color cup end right and this basically you know cleans this up rather nicely and uh, you know a lot easier and then don't just spray this through the airbrush because we've potentially blown back um potentially dried bits of paint possibly uh, and bits of dried paint going through like a 0 0.4 needle could end up blocking it so tip it upside down with the kitchen paper towel right and clean it out that way all right so any bits of debris or dry bits are coming out the color cup end onto this kitchen paper towel and not trying to get through that little tiny needle and as you can see that first little application has um, you know clean that up rather rather well so you could do that again because there's probably loads more in remember there's a little tiny reservoir down here in the needle end you're right and as you can see that is all sort of greened up all right and you can repeat this process as many times as you feel you need to do it but probably two as a minimum right and then what i like to do is i like to then come in with a bit of a a much more better product for this job which is um which is vallejo's airbrush cleaner 71199 um this stuff is really good for cleaning out airbrushes right so this is where i will then again do the same process of we'll bubble it up 
right and hopefully you can see that there is still sort of like a murky green so it's not like you know clean clean yet we'll gurgle that up a bit and again you know we haven't blown through any paint through the needle end yet right we're making sure there's no bits that are gonna you know potentially go through the needle end now i like to take off my guard right because now now i'm going to start blowing it through the needle end right this is where we can just start blowing that through potentially wipe the needle make sure there's no dry bits on that needle right and then what you're playing to simply do then is you just keep on spraying through a bit of that airbrush cleaner right until you know you don't see you know until it comes out clear basically is what you are after right now what i personally do is i'll get a bit of our um airbrush cleaner here by vallejo and i'll just pop a little bit in the bottom there right and i will leave that sitting ready until i need to use it next time now it is kind of important to to, to note here that i use my airbrush on a daily basis so um that is fine for me on a daily basis but for some of you you might not touch your airbrush for months and months and months when you finish with an airbrush um, and you know you're not going to touch it for you know several days or weeks or months uh, it is a good idea just to strip it down completely clean it and you know put it away um, but for me as i say because i know i'm going to be using it later on or tomorrow a um, little bit of airbrush cleaner in there just keeps everything nice and moist and whatnot plus because it's in it's an airbrush cleaner i do believe there is a slight lubrication to it as well so it keeps everything sort of moving rather nicely um, so now that's all sprayed um, we're basically going to be moving along and um, applying some photo etch so we're going to now move along with uh, a bit of photo etch that we have here and how to apply it. Now you can use super glue. Super glue uh, is really sort of going to nail this stuff down really good, but it is rather tricky um, to work with. So whenever you can, try and use something um, a little less. Um, so um, the problem is with super glue; it dries so fast that. Um, it just opens up so many possibilities for making mistakes maybe it glues down in the wrong position a bit too quickly and then you've got to somehow rip it up and and all sorts of nasty stuff so one good glue to use is um prick stick which is um, really cool because it's got a nice good amount of stickiness to it but at the same time you can play around you've got plenty of time to get it down um, so what we're just going to do here is going to get a cocktail stick and i'm just going to scrape off some of the prick stick onto our cocktail stick and then i'm just going to spread this on right and we want to spread this on nice and easily right so it's got like just a light film of prick stick you don't really want to have the lump see that little lump there we want to sort of get that up we just want to have this nice film where our piece of photo etch is going to go um, we've then also got there's this little tool um, it's basically like a picker up a tool really cool for um, picking up bits of photo etch which which this is the one we need as you can see it picks it up rather easily right and it will allow us to place this down right and because we've got prick stick we can sort of take our time to maneuver it right into the right position without it drying up on us right and you can just maybe wipe up with your finger or if need be you can also wipe up we've got a cotton wool bud here if there's any sort of bit of oozed out prick stick which there was just a bit underneath there we can just sort of clean that up let's get rid of those hairs off the cocktail stick they just got caught on something and we don't want loads of hairs right, get them up and you just want to get it in the right position now um, the thing is is the next bit of photo which we've got to put onto here 
is this piece right here. Now this one has got loads and loads of holes and the whole idea is, is this goes on top of here and then you can see all the dials through the holes. Um, so using prick stick is probably not the best solution because it's gonna leave a mark and you're gonna be able to see that mark through those holes. So um, another good glue we can use right is micro crystal clear by uh micro scale industries a nice american company they do micro solid set for decklin which is a really good product to use um, and with this one again you know we can come along with again a cocktail stick we can just dip that in there maybe get most of the glue off now with this glue it is basically PVA glue with the difference in that when it dries it dries as it says on the tin crystal clear right and the whole point of drying crystal clear is that where you see through the holes on this bit of photo etch here any bits of a micro crystal clear being left over is going to dry to a crystal clear glass type finish so it's going to make it look like glass which then works to your advantage so the next thing we're going to do here is just make sure everything's nicely lined up all nice and perfect sorry a little bit off camera there just make sure it's all nicely lined up so you can see all the dial through and that there um, you don't really want to be touching that for quite a bit of time because obviously it isn't super glue it is like PVA glue and prick stick it's going to take you know a bit of time to dry so you don't want to be messing about with that but that gets your decals down really really nice and easy um, and, and that is, you know, sort of like the basics of um, using photo etches to make sure you cut it off the fret nicely, as I've shown you, and then using um, the right glue for the right job. Sometimes super glue um, is more beneficial. It's more with those really tiny little pieces where uh, you need a strong, fast drying glue like super glue to get it to hold into position. Um, whereas, you know, micro crystal clear and the prick stick, you know, for big flat pieces like this, it's. Um, it's just so much easier just to use these kind of slower drying glues. Um, so I'm gonna move along and get a load of photo etch done because there is so much photo etch to, to get done inside here.